Good evening everyone. Welcome to a brand new episode of BMC Global Life Al Hilal Health World Nothing But Lifestyle. I am Anupama Menon. Good health is not a destination, it's a journey. In this talk show Health World, we have expert doctors from various fields providing valuable information to you to assist you all on your journey towards good health. Maintaining oral health is a lifelong commitment. As we all know, poor oral health can lead to cavities and bleeding gums. But what many of us are not aware of is that, and studies have proven this, that dental diseases can actually lead to certain other health complications like heart diseases, uh, uh, complications from diabetes and even respiratory illnesses. So maintaining oral health is of paramount importance. Today we are happy to have with us Dr. Rinku Jos, specialist orthodontist from Al Hilal Hospital and Medical Centers Bahrain. Dr. Rinku has made a mark for himself in the short span of seven years as a specialist orthodontist. There are so many myths surrounding oral health. We are very confused about the do's and don'ts, how many times should we brush our teeth, uh, how many times should we visit a dentist and he is here today to debunk all these myths and to put things in perspective for all of us. Thank you for joining us on the show doctor and welcome to the show. Thank you Anupama. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you? Thank you. So let's uh, begin with the most commonly asked question and this is something I'm sure a lot of viewers have in mind. Does uh, sugar lead to cavities? Because while growing up we have always heard our parents tell us you know you should not consume more sugar and that's what we tell our children also. So is this a myth or actually does sugar lead to cavities? So for many years people believed that sugar is the primary cause of tooth decay. So we have been told since we were little probably to keep us away from our favorite sweets. So even though sugar plays a crucial role in the formation of cavities, the bacteria in your mouth is the principal cause of tooth decay. The bacteria uh, feeds on the sugar and carbohydrates and produce acids. These acids as attack the tooth, the outer protective layer of the tooth enamel and causes cavities. So the fact is that the amount of sugar a child or an adult has is not the real culprit. The real problem lies in how long that sugar stays in your mouth. Okay. So if you have a decent oral hygiene practice, you brush your teeth twice a day and use a mouthwash, those small sugar treats are not much of a problem. Okay. So basically it is not the sugar which is a culprit, it is how well you maintain your oral hygiene how well you brush your teeth and it's basically the bacteria which causes the exactly. cavities. Exactly. It's like the how long the sugar stays, stays stuck in. onto your teeth is the okay. real problem. And what about natural sugars? Is that harmful for your teeth? The belief that eating a fruit instead of a sweet won't harm your teeth is based on the assumption that anything natural is always healthy and harmless. But the fact is that the bacteria cannot differentiate between a natural sugar or a refined sugar. So you still need to follow all the oral hygiene practices even after having natural fruits etc. Okay, so natural sugars are equally harmful uh, just like the normal artificial Exactly, even if it is stuck to your teeth, the natural sugar or a refined sugar is equally harmful. Okay, and what about uh, the way we brush our teeth because we are all under the impression that the harder we brush it, it is better, you know, it gives more uh, oral hygiene, it takes care of the, you know, dirt between the teeth and we tend to actually brush harder than what is normally required. So what is your take on that? Even now many people believe that they need to brush their teeth very hard to get rid of the bacteria, plaque, food debris yes. and the harder you brush, the whiter it gets is what many people still believe. But on the other hand, brushing hard does more damage to your teeth. It abrades or wears away the outer protective layer known as the enamel. Okay. This in turn leads to sensitivity. So ideally, it is advised to brush your teeth with a soft bristle toothbrush and minimal force. Okay, so soft bristle is what you would advise and brushing twice a day and we have to be careful not to put too much it is not the pressure that we apply onto the teeth, it is how efficient we are to remove all the bacteria and the food debris stuck onto our teeth. Okay. And doctor, when it comes to primary teeth, I mean lot of parents do not take uh, the uh, health of the primary teeth so seriously because they know that it is going to fall off and the milk teeth is not going to be there permanently and you know the new set of teeth is going to come. But in your opinion, is it important to take care of the cavities in the primary teeth as well? See the primary teeth plays a crucial role in the nutrition and development of the child. If there is 
initial tooth loss or like early tooth loss of uh, the milk teeth uh, the growth of the child is affected because the child does not get enough nutrition due to poor chewing uh, capability okay. and again the primary teeth guides the permanent teeth into the right position the roots of the primary teeth provide a pathway for the permanent teeth to come into the oral cavity so an early loss of primary teeth uh, causes uh, the malalignment of the permanent teeth as well so taking care of the primary teeth is equally important as taking care of your permanent teeth okay and um, about a visit to the dentist you know normally we all tend to put off a visit to the dentist you know it's always a very unnerving thought uh, going and sitting in the dentist chair and we wait for some issue to crop up but do you think it is advisable to give just a routine visit to the dentist maybe once or twice a year and to find out you know how the state of your teeth is whether it's dental anxiety or the lack of awareness nothing can justify skipping a routine visit to the dentist even if you feel that everything is okay routine dental checkup with your dentist act like a preventive care to identify any early problems and address them before they start to cause you pain or discomfort so we would recommend to have a routine dental checkup twice a year twice a year is what is ideally recommended yes. and lot of people also have a tendency to you know uh, look out for cavities at home while they're brushing their teeth they look for some kind of uh, symptom or discoloration or maybe a pain you know some kind of sensitivity so do you think these kind of visits would actually help to prevent uh, that from happening see uh, many a times by the time a cavity is visible to your naked eye or by the time it starts to cause you pain you may already be at a risk of uh, a root canal treatment or a tooth abscess or even tooth loss so ideally a dentist would be able to identify the cavity much before it's become worse and these days with dental x-rays we can detect cavities at a very initial stage so do not wait for a cavity to to be visible to your naked eye or for it to uh, start causing you pain a routine dental visit is the only way to identify cavities or any other problems at a very initial stage and i guess when it's detected at an initial stage you can always make do with a maybe a small filling instead of going for a root canal or some exactly at the very initial stage a simple filling can help save the tooth and as laymen we may not be able to uh, figure out whether a cavity is coming or not so i guess a uh, visit to the dentist at least twice a year is a must exactly and uh, uh, talking about cavities doctor we do have this normal filling for cavities and after root canal uh, crowning is done do you think this helps in preventing further tooth decay how effective is this see crowns and fillings protect your teeth in one way or the other but they do not protect your teeth against everything the crowns or filling do not protect your teeth against the bacteria that seep below the gum line and causes any gum infection or initiates a series of attack on your teeth so you need to take care of your crown the same way you would take care of your tooth okay to prevent infection in the gum so exactly. maybe the tooth may be fine but still you will have to keep in mind the infections of the gum even after the crowning is done exactly and the bacteria can seep below the crown okay. and initiate a series of attack on to the tooth if you don't maintain a good oral hygiene practice okay and lot of uh, we've seen this amongst pregnant women you know suddenly dental issues crop up maybe due to lack of calcium or other uh, hormonal changes but many of them are scared to visit the dentist thinking that it's not advisable when you're pregnant to uh, undergo any sort of dental procedure is there any truth to it is it safe to visit a dentist uh, while you're pregnant see many women avoid visiting a dentist during pregnancy this is due to the fact that they are scared of x-rays citing the harmful effect of radiation uh, to the baby so you need to understand that uh, dentists are trained individuals uh, capable to handle and they have enough knowledge to take care of the oral health care of a pregnant woman and during pregnancy there is a lot of hormones that may affect your gum the gingival health and so it makes all the more important to take care of your oral health during pregnancy which makes it mandatory to visit your dentist during pregnancy okay so firstly it's very safe and secondly i think it's very important that you should pay at least one visit to the dentist while you're pregnant exactly okay and uh, doctor what about diabetic patients any special care or precautions to be taken by them um, when they visit a dentist we are in november which is the diabetic awareness month 
and people still aren't aware that diabetes and oral health care are closely linked. Uh, many gum issues can be closely linked to your blood sugar levels. So any diabetic patient should take an extra care with his oral health and visit a qualified dentist to take care of the oral health issues. And what about scaling and cleaning of the teeth? You know, some people get it done on a regular basis, but it's also a bit of a painful procedure, I guess, when you do the scaling, there can be a little bit of bleeding, which can actually, you know, maybe people may be scared to do that as well. So in, in your opinion, how often should this be done and is it really beneficial for the oral health and hygiene? Even now, many people believe that scaling can weaken their teeth or damage their teeth or cause sensitivity or maybe even cause gaps. Uh, but the fact is that scaling does not make your teeth fragile or weak, but in the long run, it can make your teeth stronger. Uh, the issue with gaps is that sometimes a patient already has gaps between their teeth and over a period of time, the bacteria, plaque and tartar gets filled in these gaps. So when he visits a dentist and gets a scaling done, the bacteria and tartar is removed and he might see the old gaps in between. So the impression that, oh, I went and get, uh, got a scaling done and that's why I developed gaps. That's absolutely wrong. The gaps is uh, as a result of the tartar and plaque being removed in between the tooth. Over a period of time, scaling is going to make your teeth healthy in the long run. So a routine scaling every 8 to 10 months is an ideal way to take care of your teeth and the gums. So scaling definitely does not lead to an increase in gap. Uh, according to what you're saying, it's just that your bacteria, plaque and whatever is there, it's removed. So the patient feels as if the gap has come back, but that's not the truth. Exactly. And regarding the sensitivity, yes, a mild sensitivity can be seen in the initial 24 to 48 hours. This can be addressed by using a special sensitivity paste like Sensodyne Pro Enamel, etc. to take care and within 24 to 48 hours, it becomes normal. So you would definitely recommend scaling uh, to keep the teeth healthy and clean because all the bacteria and plaque are removed with uh, scaling. So I think it's a must for everyone to get scaling done on a regular basis. Exactly. And what about extraction of the tooth? Because, um, you know, there's this misconception that, you know, uh, extracting a tooth may actually affect your eyesight, you know, your vision is compromised. Uh, so is there any truth to it? See, we may need to extract tooth if it's uh, damaged way beyond repair or if there's a huge infection or even for orthodontic purpose like braces. But Absolutely, there is no link between your eyesight and a tooth being removed. Over a period of time, we have many patients asking, doctor, is there a link between my tooth removal and my eyesight? No, there is absolutely no relation and it's completely safe to remove a tooth in, if it's absolutely advised and it's not going to damage your eyesight. Okay, so we can be rest assured that eyesight is definitely not affected by the extraction yes. of the tooth. And uh, speaking about orthodontic treatment, you know, it's a common sight. We see kids and teenagers wearing braces, but off late, I've observed that I also see a lot of adults with braces, you know. We were all under the impression that after a certain age, any uh, teeth misalignment cannot be rectified because it's set. So uh, what, what is your uh, take on this? If you want to improve the look and feel of your smile, then any age can be a great time to visit an orthodontist. Around approximately uh, 25 to 30 percent of all our patients are adults. So health, happiness and well-being is vitally important no matter what age you are. Good to know that. So age is not a barrier. We can have this orthodontic treatment at any stage in your life. Exactly. Provided you have a good gum health and supporting uh, bone health. Okay. And is uh, orthodontic treatment quite expensive? See, until a few years back, orthodontic treatment was expensive, but in Al Hilal Hospital, we have different packages and installment plans to make it available, accessible and affordable to everyone in the island. Okay. And uh, when it comes to orthodontic treatment, you know, a lot of times uh, once the braces are fixed, you know, we don't feel the need to go back to the dentist for regular checkup. Only when there's some breakage or some issue, we go back. So how important is it to have regular follow-ups with the dentist uh, once you have the braces on? Again, that is due to lack of awareness among many patients that, okay, once I have the braces fixed, it's going to act automatically. That's completely wrong. Every month of follow-up visit is required 
to move your teeth in the right direction. The orthodontist may change the wire or some elastics to bring about a certain amount of tooth movement. It is definitely not going to act automatically throughout the course of treatment. So is it necessary for all kind of orthodontic treatment to remove uh, teeth or it depends on the case on that particular person's jawline and what that problem is? See every course of orthodontic treatment is tailored according to individual needs of the patient. In some cases kids or adults teeth extraction is required to create space for the crowded teeth or to improve the bite and these spaces are completely closed and you may not find you will not find any gaps at the end of treatment. Uh, again these days with the latest advancements in orthodontics and braces we can avoid tooth extraction in most of the cases. But even if you need to extract a tooth it is not going to affect uh, have any other harmful effect in any way right? It is only going not. to help you. Yes. Okay. And uh, speaking about uh, tooth loss, is this genetic, does it run in the family, let us say your parents, your father or mother has a bad set of teeth prone to cavities, are, you, uh, are we more likely to inherit that from our parents? Uh, people believe that uh, they cannot uh, fight tooth loss because they have a long family history, history. of uh, tooth loss. Mm -hmm. But again tooth loss is always a result of poor oral hygiene, a cavity and negligence. So if you take care of your teeth with proper oral hygiene, a regular visit to your dentist and some preventive care, you can have healthy teeth for the rest of your life. Okay, that is reassuring to know. So, it is definitely in our hands how we right. take care of our teeth and uh, regular visits to the dentist. Yes. Uh, so, doctor before we wrap up any takeaway message for our viewers on how to maintain good oral health and hygiene? Uh, as I have already said a couple of times, maintaining proper brushing habits using a mouthwash regular visits to a dentist that is twice a year, getting a scaling done and taking care of your overall health is definitely going to take your teeth a long way. Thank you so much doctor for joining us on the show today. We appreciate it and thank you for giving us so much of insight into the do's and don'ts. Thank you once again. Always a pleasure to be a part of BMC Health Talk. Our pleasure. Friends, I hope all of you found this episode very informative. As doctor rightly mentioned, Please do make sure that you brush your teeth twice a day, use mouthwash and most important of all regular visits to the dentist whether you experience any problem or not. Please do not wait for a cavity to come, crop up, do uh, visit the dentist regularly and you can keep all your dental problems at bay. Keep smiling that is the best and most inexpensive accessory that you can wear all the time. Till we meet again next time this is Anupama signing off, good night, stay healthy and stay safe.